All right, I told you, it is a faith-based world right now. We're talking to the faith-based influencers. Please help me welcome my next guest, Ms. Sade Orr. Up, up, see, So I met you on top of the tea party and I told you then that you are my Charday. I don't know why I just felt like her name ain't Charday, it's my Charday. Okay. I don't know. So like I received that. Thank, thank you, girl. Because everybody don't get that kind of access. So you're one in a million. How does one go? One you, in girl, oh, anyway. I can't sing, but you sound good. You can hold a note. I like you. You're gonna be a real good friend, because my husband tell me the same thing. Y'all know I can't sing. When you sing in that little bit of the song, it sounds it's, good. It sounded good. You know what? You sound like y'all need, because y'all need said you need that friend. Y'all remember she said, yo, you need that community that's going to be there for you to push you <laughs> when yes, you so ain't feeling your best. You. <laughs> Not a problem. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. After we had the panel, I was like, there's just so much more I need to know about the faith-based influencers. I'm an up and book. Ask all the questions. I need to know, because I don't get it. I think if I'm being honest with myself, mm -hmm. I was one who was scared. Really? And I'm not scared of anything. Everybody know I'm just a bold chick. It is what it is. But I think I got caught up in the trend. Mm -hmm. Literally right now, I am on a sabbatical from social media. God told me to shut it down. I, I was moving in some things and, and he told me which way to go. And I was saying, okay, God, I'm getting there, but I'm gonna do it this way. I'm a kinda, and he kept saying, shut it down. Mm -hmm. I began to plan my content for 2024. Mm -hmm. And I was on the phone with my content person who helps me shoot. And I felt so bad. I was like, girl, I can't do it. Like in my prayer closet this morning, God was like, no. I was pulling wardrobe and everything. He was like, no. So we didn't do content. I have not shot. I have not been on social media since December 15th or 16th. And I've just been listening and I found myself. Yannick was on here earlier and talking about showing up as your authentic true self. I struggled with showing up as my true self. Right. And not being afraid to say that I love God. But I remember one time a male mentor told me, like, Sheree, you are so full of the power of the Holy Spirit. You encourage people. He was like, but if I saw you on social media, I wouldn't know that you were a Christian or you believe in God. Not that I live a wild life. I'm very classy and poised, honey. Bald head girl. But you would, he wouldn't have known it. So when I look at when I met you and I saw I had to go look a little bit about your social media. You are boldly living for Christ. In fact, you are a faith influencer. Yeah. How does that life look like? What does that lifestyle look like for you? I think for me, it's just living the way that I am and turning my camera on sometimes. I like to think, especially when you're talking about faith in a social space, that it should be out of an overflow. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you are not full of what you're talking about, then it's really hard to pour into others on any platform, whether it's in person, whether it's on social media. And so I feel like for me, showing up looks like an overflow of what I'm already doing on a regular basis by myself. That's good. So you're married. Yes. How long have you been married? I've been married, we're in our fourth year. Oh, okay. So not newlyweds. I just, I've just met you. I've just started to follow yeah. you and I thought it was brand new, but I love the holiday photos and everything. Thank you. So is your husband saved as well? My husband is saved. We met at church. Oh, okay. Which church? So it's World Changers Church International. We actually both were working there. So we met at work, which was also our church. Oh, that's time. Creflo, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very familiar. Been there a few times as well. Yes. Now, were you born and raised as a Christian? I was born and raised as a Christian, but I was born and raised Baptist. You know, you would kind of like smoke outside the church yep. if you felt like it. Them deacons. You know, I was raised Baptist. Um, and I didn't know anything about the Bible Belt until I really moved down here in 2014. But prior to that, I grew up in church. I was in the choir. I was on the usher board. My mom was a Sunday school teacher. She's a minister. So oh, okay. definitely brought up in the church so for sure. So it's in you. But I like you just said something. You didn't know the Bible belt oh the bible belt or even god in the way that i know him now until you moved here. until i moved here i feel like that's my story i was born and raised church 18 times a day pentecostal okay and i feel i feel like it wasn't until i moved to georgia is when i began to know christ for myself yeah so is it was it a struggle for you as far as like how, what made you say tap in and say okay now i got a relationship with god um i honestly feel like ooh, okay being completely transparent was raised in the church, did not go to church at all in college. So for four years, I just 
did not do church, I felt like I had met my quota. Okay. You know, yeah. you went 18 times a day. Yeah. I felt like I didn't need to go all the time. Didn't go in college. Once I graduated college, I wanted to be in the dance ministry at church, but I didn't want to be a member of the church. Oh, okay. And the leader of the dance ministry was like, Sharda, you have to rejoin the church. But you was used to being Baptist, doing things y'all way. So Ooh. you wasn't, yeah, I know how to Baptist, yep. <laughs> I mean, yes, call me to the carpet, sis. Call me to the carpet. Um, but yeah, and then I met a guy, we got engaged, the engagement was broken off and it was traumatizing. Mm -hmm. It's a very public relationship, very public engagement and a very traumatic breakup. Wow. And um, I reconnected with God in that season because I felt like I couldn't talk to people about what happened. I was very embarrassed. I was very ashamed. And that was the season where I rebuilt my relationship with God from a standpoint of it's not about me checking all the boxes because I was in a space where it was like, I did everything right, God. I didn't have sex. We wasn't kissing. We wasn't doing this. We wasn't doing that. He was a man of God. He was he was Kojic, Jesus. Yeah. I was wearing turtlenecks up to here in the summertime. I, I wasn't wearing red lipstick. All of the things. Wow. And it still failed. Tradition. Tradition. And the word says tradition will make the word of God of no effect. Come on. And my little Bible told her right here. <laughs> and I just, I had to, I, I, I had some questions for the Lord. I was like, how you do me, how you did me. And um, we rebuilt our relationship from there. And he told me to move to Atlanta and I moved. And I joined a church that taught the word in a way that transformed my life. Is this world changer? This is where mm -hmm, you've been. Mm -hmm. I love to hear that. Now, born and uh, raised or raised Baptist, you know the Lord, you went off to college, tried to do your own thing, you got engaged. You also mentioned, as we talked about at the tea party, that you were in radio, yes. if I'm not mistaken. So in that lifestyle, was that where you tried to do life your way as well? Yes. Or had you had the relationship with God and then you just kind of dropped him off to the side again? So I started working in radio and entertainment while I was in college. So my freshman year, I started interning and I got brought on as a contractor mm -hmm. to do things throughout the summer when I was home for breaks, et cetera. And when I graduated, they created a position for me that was a national tour coordinator. So I'm talking going on tour buses with, at the time, like a Trey Songs or a Pretty Ricky, but this is when no one really knew who they were. It was like breaking them into the industry. And it was, it was interesting, you know what I mean? I was drinking and I was underaged. I was partying all of the days of the week that I could. Mm -hmm. I knew all of the promoters. And I mean, I lived that way for a while. And when I reconnected with God, I tried to introduce it to the circle that I was in and some were receptive, but some were like, girl, what are you doing? Cause I was still kind of one foot in one foot out, which mm -hmm. I can admit. Mm -hmm. That would definitely confuse the people that you're around. Absolutely. But what gave you the strength to actually make the decision to say, you know, regardless whether you receive it or not, I'm going this way. Like I know that God has brought me out of this and you chose God over that industry and that circle. How was that? I think for me, Part of it was the guy that I was engaged to and it ended up not working out, if I'm being honest. Oh, that's what helped you. Yeah, when I met him, he had this relationship with God that was, I admired. I admired the way that he could hear from the Holy Spirit. I admired the way that he sought God on things that he was, decisions he was making in his life, all of the things and I could see the fruit in his life and I said man I want that and so I you know slowly I stopped drinking I stopped partying I started doing the Kojic quote unquote things um but it was performance right mm -hmm. and then eventually it turned into something different but that was the start for me really admiring somebody else's relationship so you got yes I, I totally can relate to that my first marriage it was not him it was his relationship with God. Wow. And I was like, oh, my God, I love that he gets up at 3 o'clock in the morning and pray. <laughs> oh, gosh. I love that he, when he's in the office and he's praying, he's calling out people's names mm -hmm. and the study time. I loved all that. But outside of that, that, that flesh was the worst <laughs> thing I could have ever met in my life. And so it was like I was caught up in the performance yeah. because he wasn't it wasn't in him. He wasn't living the lifestyle. He wasn't treating it. So I can definitely relate to that. Um, of course, I walked away from it and ended it. But 
now looking at that and now being exposed to that, it's still hard to still live for Christ once you've admired that in somebody else and it turned out to be something different. Like, how do you how do you continue to live that faith based life, even seeing like, oh, that was a letdown. But God, I still trust you to do something to me. Um, I think for me, it comes from understanding that everybody's human. And I think that's where grace comes in, where as long as I'm in this human body in some way, I am going to be flawed. I'm going to miss the mark. And that doesn't mean that God isn't who he says he is. It just means that you're still being transformed. You're still being worked on. And every single person who is down here has an issue of some kind. It's just that my issue may be different than your issue. And I can't judge you for yours mm. because I got one too. So I think when people let me down or when I feel like even God has let yeah. me down, I have to remind myself that I'm not in it for what he can do for me. And I think that's mm. growth in and of itself, that's that good. God is not just a genie for me. It's a relationship and I trust him. I trust that he is good. Whether it goes my way or not, right. I still trust whatever he says. Yeah, somewhere down the line, it's gonna work out for my good. Now in this, you talked about moving into the, the trust. Showing up every day mm -hmm. in this world of social media and what's trending mm -hmm. versus what you believe and believe the lifestyle that you live, mm -hmm. what struggle or do you have struggles with showing up and being a faith influencer, regardless of what is trending? Yes, <laughs> definitely. I think sometimes when you feel like God is not moving for you, there's this space of it's like, God, you had me showing up for other people but I don't feel like you're showing up for me. Mm. And it's almost as though you feel sometimes like a fraud where it's like, how can I keep preaching this stuff that I believe it, but it's not happening in my life. So that's one. And two is feeling anger towards a God who you're talking about, but who you feel like isn't showing up for you. Mm. And I think the way that I get through that is my community, okay. having people pour the word back into me when I can't pour it into myself. Um, reading through journals, really going back and looking and reminding myself of things that God has already done mm, in seasons it. where I thought he couldn't do it. That, now that's it right there. Mm -hmm. I tell people like, go look back. The last time you was at this space, mm -hmm. this thought, look back to where God has brought you from. Like the Bible said we should have a child like mine. I think that we forget to have that because we've been through stuff and it's like, oh, I'm not doing that again. So I, <laughs> I can't trust you to that level, God. I can give you this much space, but yeah. that's good talking about community as well. That power, that circle. The power yeah. circle, somebody who can pour it back into you because you're, you're an influencer. You have a huge following. So who who would think that you can now go sit in front of your friends and say, y'all, I don't got it today. I, I'm tapped out. I need something, you know, tap me in, tag them in, put me in there. And you talked about praying for things or believing things for other people where God is not showing up in your life yet. Um, you also mentioned on the panel, which we didn't get to talk about. I think we wanted to, to just turn up a notch at the end when you had the mic about the, um, you have a, a diagnosis yeah. that you live with. Um, what is it? Um, it's called polycystic kidney disease. And it's something I was diagnosed with a few years ago. Um, they say that it is hereditary. It's something that my dad dealt with, five of his siblings dealt with, his father dealt with. Um, and it's interesting to be talking about faith and healing and all of these things while simultaneously feeling like you're not actively seeing it show up in your life. So how do you relate that to what story in the Bible do you relate that to that gives you the faith to keep going? Um, for me, a lot of times I relate it to and it's funny because on the panel I was talking about Hannah and that's the only thing that's coming up right now. Um, but I also just feel like there are scenarios where even with I think it was Paul that had the thorn in his side and he was like, well, remove this. Mm -hmm. God, like I know yes. that you can make it so that I don't have to deal with this issue. But God was saying it's good it's to buffet you, to keep you from thinking that you can do what you're doing without me. Mm. It is a reminder, uh, a meeting point that I need God to continue on. Absolutely. So I think in the word it says, my grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna remove it, but there is grace for you to do what you need to do with it going on at the same time. And I can definitely attest to that. I love that. Now as an influencer though, mm -hmm. do you think that, that, do you look back at your life and say like, 
definitely this is all a part of my journey mm -hmm. and this is what God is challenging me with to show up and actually pour out even when you feel like I'm believing this for the for my audience but then it's still not happening for me mm -hmm. do you really believe like that's still a part of the journey I do and I honestly feel like sometimes when we have things going on in our lives the more of a crowd or a following that you amass means that there's a larger audience to see God get the glory out of the situation. I think about Jesus and how his ministry, they say that the more and more he would preach and teach, the more people would show up. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like when you have something that no one's ever seen it done before, when you raise somebody from the dead, yes. you know what I mean? Yes. And you have a, a crowd of people, it has a different effect than when you do it in secret. And so I have to believe that whatever God is doing in my life, the fact that I have a following or an audience is just a larger group of people who can see the manifestation and the glory of God for God themselves. The yeah. yeah. I think about the man at the well who, you talk about community and mm -hmm. it just comes to me. The man who stayed at the well for, was it seven years? He just, he couldn't get in the water uh, because his legs wouldn't work. And he got to Jesus said, why aren't you in the water? He said, I don't have anybody to put me in the water. But if you think about how long was he sitting there and, and, and everybody was just going around the well and he had nobody thought to pick him up, put him in there. But everybody was asking him, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? He's lame. And so when you have, all you need is somebody to pick you up put you in the water, put your toe in the water, sprinkle the water on you. All you need is that community to do that. And I think that you give hope to those people. They're in, they're sitting at the water. Mm -hmm. And the more you show up on camera and you, you don't even have to struggle about what your title is. I'm a faith influencer. I'm going to influence you to have this faith. I'm going to mm -hmm. let you live my, see my lifestyle. Do you think that the trends are going to change on social media. Do you find that more people are living out loud for Christ and actually guiding people that way? I think there are two things that are happening. I feel like, yes, there are people who are living out loud with faith, 100%. But I also think that there's a certain section of people who use faith as a niche. Mm. They okay. use it because they it may be trending in certain spaces. And so it's like, oh, I'm going to hop on this trend. But I think you can really tell the difference between a person who's living out what they're talking and a person who is using it the same way they would use another trend. So mm -hmm. I, I have so much respect for women who are finding God while on social media and had a platform for something else in the beginning. I love that. I love seeing women in the middle of their journeys. Um, but of course, there's always going to be a new trend. 100%. Yes, always. Every always. Week. Yeah. If you're keeping up with social media. Mm -hmm. What is your goal as a faith influencer on the social media platforms that you stand on? Um, to continue being my authentic self and to not be afraid to share things that I'm still in the midst of. Mm -hmm. I think that for me, I used to be the type of person where I'm going to tell you the testimony at the, at the end of the testimony. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I don't really go into what's happening while I'm in the midst of the test part of the testimony. And I feel like for me, God has called me at certain times to say, let people know what you're going through right now. And I think that people have this habit, especially on social media, of looking at people and saying, you know, oh no, she would never be dealing with this or she would never be dealing with that. And I think that sometimes when people can see you going through something, mm -hmm. it helps them to understand like, oh, okay, everyone has a struggle. Yes. Everyone has something that they're going through. Mm -hmm. I think that that's where we're coming to actually living out loud. Uh, I used to ask people, what is it to be transparent? Mm -hmm. I think that there is healing in transparency. Yeah. But at what point are we transparent? Is it after, like you said, after we've gotten through and it's like, oh, girl, I went through this. I went through that. You know, yeah, I have the Bentley now in the house, but they don't, you know, yeah, I was homeless. But when you were homeless. So is transparency while you're in the midst of it or is it after you come out of it? It's so funny. I asked God that question maybe like this time last year, and he was telling me that there's a difference between transparency and vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that transparency is when you're able to share what happened after the fact and not leave any facts out because there's no shame and there's no guilt that you can be transparent and say, this is what happened. This is how I dealt with it. But that vulnerability is this is what's happening in my soul right now. Okay. In this moment, this is what I'm dealing with. And it's important to learn 
where and when are safe spaces to be the vulnerable mm-hmm. person to say, this is happening right now. Yep. This is how I feel about it. And social media is not yeah, always that place. No, it's not. I'm sorry. You got to build it up for you to too. show up and say that. Cause yeah. that's interesting. I never, I never put it that way or looked at it from that perspective. So thank you for sharing that with me. Cause now I'm going to go back and talk to God. <laughs> Girl, about okay. That's it. what it is. Okay. Yes. If y'all hear me say it, y'all already know. Sade said it first. It's okay. I'm going to say it again. I'm it's sorry. ours. We're going to share it. Yeah. We're sharing it. It's my Sade. We, we got that clear okay <laughs> yes um i really think that that's where the the trend is coming i really feel like i see more people finding christ and um i see even in the secular world you know um the episode is women who opt to live a faith-based life in a secular society and because i see the bigger names that are crying out that are getting on social media crying and saying like i i need god and they don't really know where to go or how to do it and a lot of those names even follow yourself yannick um and a few other of the faith-based influencers and so i feel like the trend is coming there i feel like more people want to know christ they want to live out loud we're getting to the point where it's like i don't have no choice but to do it like (laughs) you don't want god to make you do it but we're getting to that point where i feel that and i feel like you should um take pride in the fact that you're a part of that the start of that trend to see somebody your color young woman who's living out us black girls you know living out loud for christ i want to thank you personally for doing that because it's definitely touched me and so many other people um and I've been in prayer with you since the, the tea party Thank you. about the diagnosis mm-hmm. that we would just soon be over with. And yeah. God be with I have something myself that I deal with. It's called costal chondritis, which we're talking mm-hmm. about um, coming up. It's not really heard about. The medical field doesn't know a lot about it. Yet I deal with it almost every day and it's getting worse. And so for me to show up with bubbly and sometimes not even be able to move my arms, but I'm showing up. Um, and so learning that diagnosis, how to live with it and still trust God. I mean, I'm like, God, I know I prayed to you this morning about it, but God, I'm trusting that you heal my body. I mean, it's like all day long, you know, and then struggling like one that says sit at his feet and continue to pray and then this one pray and let it go. So it's kind of like, you know, in that walk with Christ, have you ever just found yourself at that intersection? It's like, okay, you pray, do you trust them? Do you got to keep praying about it? Or do you just stay at his feet? Um, Both ends. Ah. I feel like, you know, there's some things, some things that I pray about and I leave it with God and I forget I prayed about it and he come around and do it. And I'll be like, dang, I forgot. I even prayed about that. But there's some things, you know, like we're talking about diagnosis that I stay at his feet and it's like, I'm going to keep casting that care because it's something I care about. And where it says, to cast my care. So if I find myself caring and worrying about it, it's like, I'm gonna go into prayer, I'm gonna cast my care, as long as it's bothering me. I love that. See, she teaching y'all, she came here to teach. If you could just look at my camera as we wrap up, I'm so glad that I got a chance to sit down with you. If you could look into that camera, that's your camera. Yes, Charday, talk to a woman who is dealing with something and actually scared to show up in her authentic self. Maybe she's struggling to get on social media. Maybe she's just struggling to go to the next level that God has for her. What do you have to say? To the woman who is afraid to show up and speak faith on social media, I want to say to you, start off camera first. Start by sharing with your friends. Start by sharing with your family. Start by, you know, sharing with whoever else the Lord is leading you to in your everyday life. And then once you've worked up the unction to be love in the grocery store, to be love with your waiter at a restaurant, to be love with your husband who may be being unlovable, then ask God to give you the boldness to show up on social media and do it unafraid. Do it knowing that you're not showing up by yourself because where you go, he's with you. And don't worry about the followers or what people may think. People are always going to have an opinion. But don't be ashamed of a God who is absolutely not ashamed of you. Oh, that, that that's it right there. <laughs> but I, I was going, I'm not even going to say that. That's it. That's it right there. Thank you so much, Sade, for jumping on the show and sitting in the seat with me. Thank and coming you. Coming by to say something. Our theme this year, as you know, is do it scared. Mm-hmm. Anything that God is calling you to do the next level, because I know there's something inside of you that you're going after. We all are. We should be. Yeah. I want you to know that you should do it scared. This is the season to do it scared. And we want you to do it scared. So before we wrap up, we're going to bring our other girl back out on the scene with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. For having me. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, this was amazing. I am so happy that I got a chance to sit down with you guys. Like I said, my theme is Do It Scare. So I want to present to you a custom t-shirt with the year that you were born, because that's okay. when it was established. When God created you, he created you with not fear, without a spirit of yes. fear, right? So that is yours. And here's yours established. In 1988, 89, and I'll have mine. As you encourage the rest of us through social media, I want you all to do it scared. Go to the next level that God has for you. If that be bigger stages, bigger platforms, whatever it is, I want you to do it scared and go, okay? Thank you. You've been an inspiration to me. Until the next time we have said something, remember to live your life out loud for the Lord. And if you got a problem with it, come see me. We'll teach you how to say something. <laughs>